Hello, my name is Rajkov Statiev. I'm from the Medical University of Vienna, Austria. And on behalf of my co-authors, I would like to present our manuscript entitled Fergicore, a randomized controlled trial on ferricarboxymal dose for iron deficiency anemia in inflammatory bowel disease to be published in gastroenterology. Iron deficiency anemia is the most common complication in inflammatory bowel disease affecting about one third of patients. Current treatment guidelines favor the use of IV iron to oral iron due to better efficacy and tolerability. The best studied substance for this indication is iron sucrose. However, the use of iron sucrose is limited by the fact that only 200 milligrams could be administered with a single infusion and most IBD patients require at least 1,000 milligrams for the total iron replacement required for the treatment of IBD-associated anemia. Ferricarboxymaltose is a novel intravenous iron compound that could be administered in single infusions of up to 1,000 milligrams and therefore might be more practical for the use in iron deficiency anemia and IBD. The total dose of iron that needs to be administered for the treatment of iron deficiency anemia is currently calculated by the Gantoni formula. Unfortunately, this formula is rather complicated, therefore its use is inconvenient, prone to errors, and therefore it is not consistently used in clinical practice. The aim of the Frigicore study was to test a novel simplified dosing regimen of ferricarboxymal dose to an individually calculated Gantoni based treatment regimen of iron sucrose for the correction of uh, iron deficiency anemia in inflammatory bowel disease. The Fergie core is so far the largest study addressing this indication. Fergie core was designed as a multi-center, randomized controlled, open-label trial. Patients with iron deficiency anemia, defined as hemoglobin, between 7 and 12 grams per deciliter for females, or 7 to 13 grams per deciliter for males, as well as ferritin below 100 micrograms per liter were included in this study. Patients also had to have a mild to moderate Crohn's disease or colitis. Patients were randomized one to one to receive either ferricarboxymaltose or iron sucrose. The ferricarboxymaltose total dose was taken from a table based on baseline hemoglobin and body weight. The total dose of iron sucrose, on the other hand, was calculated individually for every patient using Gantoni's formula. The total dose of iron was then administered in bi-weekly infusions of 200 mg of iron with a maximum of 11 infusions per patient. The primary endpoint of the study was the percentage of patients who achieved an increase of hemoglobin compared to baseline of above 2 grams per deciliter by the end of the study, which was week 12. Secondary efficacy endpoints included the percentage of patients with normal hemoglobin, normal ferritin, or normal transferrin saturation, as well as a time course analysis of these parameters. Also, quality of life was assessed using the SF36 questionnaire or the IBTQ questionnaire. Now coming to the results of the study, 485 patients were randomized to receive either ferricarboxymaltose or iron sucrose. The primary endpoint was reached in 66% of the patients on ferricarboxymaltose versus 54% of patients on iron sucrose. Statistical analysis confirmed that the ferricarboxymaltose regimen was superior to iron sucrose. Also for the secondary endpoints, the percentage of normalization of hemoglobin, transferrin saturation or ferritin, ferricarboxymaltose showed a better efficacy profile. The time course analysis demonstrated that with ferricarboxymaltose, an increase in hemoglobin, transferring saturation and ferritin was achieved earlier and was higher during all time points. The quality of life improved from baseline in both treatment groups and there were no significant differences between the groups. In terms of safety, both substances were well tolerated. The most common treatment-related adverse events were hyperferritinemia and hypophosphatemia. In conclusion, the Fergie course study demonstrated that the novel simplified regimen of ferricarboxymaltose was superior to the individually calculated Gantoni-based regimen of iron sucrose 
for the correction of inflammatory bowel disease associated iron deficiency anemia. The treatment with varicoboximaltose was associated with short infusion times and the lower number of infusions necessary to administer the total iron dose. Interestingly, although both substances were highly efficacious in achieving normal hemoglobin, only a small percentage of patients on both treatments could achieve a ferritin level of above 100 micrograms per liter by the end of the study. As low end of treatment ferritin levels are associated with early recurrence of anemia, maintenance iron replacement treatment might be necessary in IBD patients. This is the objective of the recently completed Fergie main study, which is hopefully going to be published soon. I'd like to thank all the participating investigators of this study, and also thank you for your attention, hoping that you're going to read the full manuscript on gastroenterology soon. Thank you very much, goodbye.